All right here, so we have journal 40 here and we have two problems that we're gonna take a look at. These are both um, simplifying problems of the root. So this one here is a cube root. So anytime you're taking a root, you wanna handle the numbers first separately from the variables. So how do we take the cube root of a negative number? Well, we'll just make a factor tree. So two numbers that multiply to give you 216 are Let's see here, 36 times 6. 36 can be broken down as 6 times 6. And I could break this down further. However, I only care about the cube root. So cube root are looking for triples. In other words, uh, three numbers that are the same. So in this case, I've already arrived at my three numbers here. They're all sixes. Notice I have three six. So that means I can bring out a 6, but because there, it's a negative 216, this needs to be a negative 6. So the cube root of 200, negative 216 is negative 6. All right, now let's take a look at a to the 6th power. Now for the variables, all you got to do is take the exponent and divide it by the root. So 6 divided by 3 gives me a squared, or 2. So 6 divided by 3 gives you 2, so that's why I have an a squared. Now I'm going to take my b, which is to the 18th power. 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. So I need to have b to the 6th power, and that is my final answer. Okay, let's take a look at b here. So for b, I have a square root, so I know there is a 2 out here. So I'm going to write that 2 because that helps me remind me what number I'm dividing by. So now I have to ask myself, okay, what's the square root of 9? So square root of 9 is just 3. So out here, I have a 3. So just taking care of the number, now I'm going to approach the variables. So x to the 8th power, 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So x to the 4th power. y is to the 11th power here, right? So 11 divided by 2 doesn't divide evenly. So you could write this as a decimal, so that would be 11 divided by 2 would be 5.5. But here's a better way to write it. So I'm going to erase that that I just wrote. So, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is take my y to the 11th power. I'm going to write it all out. So y to the 11th power is y times y 11 times, right? So I'm going to write them out. Okay, I think that's 11 y's right there. So now what I'm going to do, because this is a square root, right, that means each group needs a pair of two. So I'm going to pair them up. So in that case, I have one pair, two pair, three pair, four, five, and then I have a leftover y. So how many pairs do I have here? I have five. So this means that y to the fifth power can come outside the root. But because I have a leftover y, this y did not have a pair, I have to throw this back into the square root. So I have a square root of y still. So this is my final answer. Okay. But let's think about how we approach this without writing out y's a dozen times, right? So what you have to do is ask yourself, okay, how many 2's fit in 11? Well, the maximum 2's that fit in 11 are 5. Then ask yourself, okay, if 5 went in, how many are left over? Well, it's 1 left. So this is why it's y to the first power here. Now, if you didn't quite understand that, think about it. 2 times 5 gives you 10. 10 subtracted by 11 gives you 1, and this is why is 1 to the first power. We're going to do some more practice problems like this, dealing with what we call imperfect roots, okay? So let's go move on to the next slide here. So today's lesson. All right, so today we're going to be talking about three things, and the first thing we're going to talk about is simplifying radicals. So radicals are basically these roots. Okay, symbols. Now, radicals can mean square root, cube root, or fourth root. And in order to simplify a radical, we need to remove what we call the perfect root factors from inside the radical. So this is what I mean. If you were to have the square root of 18, 
Let's think about it. What is the square root of 18? Well, 18 is not a perfect square root like 4. Like the square root of 4 is 2, right? That worked out perfectly, but 18 doesn't. 18 can be broken down as, let's see, 6 times 3, and then 6 can be broken down as 2 times 3. Now, when I because this is a square root, I can have a pair of 3s, so 3 can come out of the root, but 2 is my leftover, so I have the square root of 2 still back inside the root. So what it means to be a perfect root factor is the 3s here. The 3, that because it's a pair, you can bring that outside the root, okay? So we're going to be dealing with numbers that are not so nice to take the square root of or take the root of. So like this uh, part A is the square root of 72A to the 8B to the 5th power. So first, if this is a square root, I have to have a 2 outside here, right? I like to just write the 2. And let's see, the square root of 72. 72 is not a perfect square root. So I'm going to break it down to factors. 72 can be broken down as 9 times 8 right? And 9 can be broken down as 2 times 2, 8 can be broken down as 4 times 2, and 4 can be broken down as 2 times 2. So when I look at this, let's look for those pairs. So it looks like 3 is a pair, 2 is a pair, and then 2 is a leftover. So what can come out? A 3 can come out, a 2 can come out, so 3 and 2 come out, and what we have to do with these two numbers is multiply. So 3 times 2 gives me 6. And my leftover is 2. So I'm going to put this back in the root. That's why I created this square root right here. So I made this square root to put in my leftover 2 in this case. Now I put some room here because I know I'm dealing with a's more variables, so I might need more space. So now I'm going to go to the a. a is to the 8th power, so I'm going to divide. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4, so a to the 4th power. And because that divided evenly, I'm going to write that outside the root. So a to the 4th power. b is to the 5th power, so 2 divided by 5. Well, 2 doesn't divide into 5 evenly, right? So I'm going to have some leftovers. But first, how many 2's go into 5? Well, two times. Two can go into five two times, at least max-wise. How many do I have left over? I have one. So in this case, b to the first power goes back inside the root. You don't even have to write the one there, but I just did. And this is our answer. All right, let's take a look at b here. We have the cube root of negative 54. So um, I don't know what the cube root of negative 54 is, but I know how to make a factor tree. So I'm going to use a factor tree to break this down. So 54 is composed of 9 times 6. And 9 can be decomposed as 3 times 3. 6 can be decomposed as 3 times 2. So when I look at this, um, because this is a cube root, I need to find triples. So in this case, I can group up these two. I'm sorry, not these two, these three as my triple. So I have three threes here. So that means a three can come outside the root. But because this is a negative, <clears throat> a negative 54, I have to put a negative in front of my three. But also, do we have leftovers in our factor tree? Yes, we do. This two here was not utilized. So this two is a leftover. So that means it goes back into the root. So I'm going to make some space here to make sure if I have room for my variables. So in here, I need a root, but this is a cube root, so I need to write a 3 here. And I'm going to put my 2 in. Now I'm going to move on to the letters. So this is x to the 6th power, so 6 divided by 3 gives me 2, so x squared. Um, this y is to the 11th power, so how many times does 3 go into 11? 3 can go into 11 about 3 times. So I have y to the third on the outside, but how many y's do I still have left? Right? So that's going to be 2. I'm going to have y squared on the outside. Okay, so now I'm going to do 
Okay, so now we're in part C. So part C, we have the uh, fourth root of uh, 48 is our number here. So the fourth root of 48, I'm not sure what it is, but I know how to make a factor tree. So 48, I can do 12 times 4 to get 48. And then 12 can be decomposed as 4 times 3. And 4 can be decomposed as 2 times 2. And this 4 can be decomposed as 2 times 2. So when I look at this, let's highlight all the prime numbers. 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime. So those are all my prime numbers. When I look at that, we have to find 4 of the same kind. So in this case, it looks like the same um, numbers here is the 2. So I can group up these 2s together. So I need quadruples. So it looks like 2 can come out of the root, and I have a leftover 3, so I put that back in the root. And this is a fourth root, that's why I made a fourth root. And I'm going to kick the 3 back in. Now I'm going to work with the variables. So variables, you do division. So 4 divided into 9 doesn't divide evenly, but 4 can go into 9 about 2 times. So a squared, or a to the second power. And then I have a leftover a, just one leftover, so that's a on the inside to the first power. 4 can't divide into 3 evenly, right? Doesn't even fit into 3. So in this case, b3 gets put back into the root. Now we're going to try the c. So c is to the 16 power. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So that did divide evenly, so I'm going to put that on the outside. So 16 to the fourth power. And that is simplified. All right. Let's try adding and subtracting radicals next. Okay, so this part here, we're simplifying uh, radicals by adding and subtracting. And so when we're adding and subtracting radicals, the radicals portion is like combining like, like terms. So let's talk about combining like terms. So remember how like when we had exponents like x squared, let's say this, 2x squared plus x. We would say that these two are like terms because they're both x squared, right? And so then we would join these two together by adding the coefficients. So I would have 5x squared plus x. And now this is simplified because I can't combine these two because they're different exponents, right? So what did we do here? Well, we added the coefficients together. So 3 plus 2 gives me 5. But notice how x squared, we didn't add the exponents together. It just stays the same. Okay, just keep that in mind. So we're going to use that type of characteristics to combine these radicals. So this first one here, in order to combine these two, you have to make sure that they're both the same radical. In other words, they both have to be the same root, and they both have to have the same number underneath the root. Notice that both of these are square roots, and they're both 11s underneath. So these two are like uh, terms. In this case, just like how we did it before, we're going to combine the 5 and the 6 by adding. So 5 plus 6 gives me... So 5 plus 6 gives me 11, right? But then I also need to write the square root of 11 because that's what they both have. So I need to make sure I write that same root to the side after I've added. So let's try out this one here. They both have square root of y's. So I can, in this case, subtract the 7 from the 10. So 7 minus 10 gives me negative 3, but I also need to write a square root of y next to it. So that is my answer. This was my other answer. Box that in. Okay, but now let's take a look at c. So c here, if we look at the radicals, they're all square roots, which is great, but they, are, they don't have the same number underneath. So in this case, what I have to do is t somehow transform all of these radicals to look like they could be the same um, number underneath. So how do I do that? Well, I have to simplify the root by using um, a factor tree. So 45 is composed of 9 times 5. 9 can be decomposed as 3 times 3. So in this case, if this is a square root, I have a pair. So 3 can come out, 5 is a leftover, square root of 5. So that's why 5 is out here now. I'm going to drop down this minus sign down here. 
this is minus. Now I have to figure out the factors of 80. So 80 is composed of 8 and 10. 10 can be decomposed as 5 and 2. 8 can be decomposed as 5 and 2. And 4 can be decomposed as 5, 2 and 2. So when I look at this, my pairs are, let's see, these two, these two, and the 5 is a leftover. So there are two pairs of 2's here. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. And then I have a square root of 5 because 5 is a leftover. Okay. Now let's take a look at the last one here. I have a plus 5 here. So I'm going to bring that down. So plus 5. The square root of 20 can be broken down as five, 4 and 5. 4 can be broken down as 2 and 2. So in this case, I have two pairs of 2's. So I can bring the 2 out and have just the square root of 5 because 5 is a leftover. But this 2 gets multiplied with this 5. So I'm going to put that multiplication symbol between. So looking at this, I have square root of 5 minus 4 square root of 5 plus 10 square root of 5. So notice that now we can see that they're all square roots of 5, so they are all like terms. So what I'm going to do is combine the numbers. So 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1. Negative 1 plus 10 gives me 9 square root of 5. So all I did was total up the coefficients in front. And that is my answer. Okay, let's try out this one here. This one is a cube root. So for a cube root, let's break it down with the factor tree. So 16 is composed of 4 times 4. Um, 4 can be decomposed as 2 and 2. So in this case, I have to find triples. So it looks like I have 3 2's for sure. So 2 can come out. So it's like I have this 2 outside. So I'm going to write the 2 out. And then I have another 2 that came from this triple. I'll bring that outside. And then I have a leftover 2. So I'm going to put that back in the cube root. So I just made this look like this. Now let's try the other one. So I have a plus 3. So I'm plus 3. And then I have to take the cube root of 54. So the cube root of 54 is, let's see, 9 times 6 gives me 54. 9 can be broken down as 3 times 3. 6 can be broken down as 2 times 2. So it looks like I have a triple of 3s. So that means 3 can come out, but I have a leftover 2. So 2 goes back in. And then this last one here, we have a minus 2. Put a minus 2 here. Let's try to be consistent in my colors. And so now I have to take the cube root of 72. 72 is 9 times 8. Uh, 9 can be decomposed as 3 times 3. 8 can be decomposed as 4 times 2. 4 can be decomposed as 2 and 2. So when I look at this, it looks like my triple is, let's see. Okay, so there looks like to be three twos here, so two can come out. And then I have, looks like a leftover of two threes, right? So in this case, three times three gives me nine, so I have to put the, square, uh, the cube root of nine back into the root. So when I look at this, I can see that um, I can combine perhaps these two. But let's simplify this and make this a lot cleaner. So I'm going to shrink this just a little so we can have more room. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. Cube root of 2 plus 3 times 3 gives me 9. Minus 2 times 2 gives me 4. Cube root of 9. These two are like terms because they're both cube roots. I think I forgot the three here. Yes, I did. My bad. So because they're both cube roots and they're both have a two underneath, we can combine the like terms. So four plus nine gives me 13 cube root of two minus four cube root of nine. And that 
is my final answer. It's the same square root. All right, so last slide for today. So we have um, simplifying with using multiplication. So for multiplying um, radicals, what you do is you multiply the outside with the outside and the inside with the inside. So what I mean by this is outside is referring outside the root. So like, like this one here for B, 6 is on the outside, 4 is on the outside. So I'd multiply those two and keep it on the outside. The inside is referring inside the root, so I'd multiply this inside with this inside and keep it under the root. So let's use A as our first example here. So I have a 5 here, right, as my outside, and then I have a 1 outside this root because there's not a number. So 5 times 1 gives me 5, and then on the inside of my root, I'm going to make a cube root here. I'm going to multiply these two. So 1,000 times 10 gives me, sorry, not 1,000, 100 times 10 gives me 1,000. And then a squared times a to the, let's see, first power is going to be a to the third power, right? And now after I've multiplied everything, I want to try to simplify, just like before. So using this root here, I'm going to try to simplify the 1,000. So what's the cube root of 1,000? Well, it is 10. So I have a 5 out here, and outside this root now I have a 10, so I'm going to have to multiply these two. The cube root of a to the third power is, let's see, 3 divided by 3 gives me a to the first power. If I clean this up just a little bit, 5 times 10 gives me 50, so I have 50 a as my answer okay now let's take a look at this problem here so this here we have um let's see we have six the outside here we have a six times four which is going to give me 24 and then the inside here we have a square root so i'm going to make a square root eight times two gives me 16. c to the third power times c to the first power is c to the fourth power. d to the fifth power times d to the third power gives me d to the eighth power. So when I look at this, I know that this is a square root, so I'm going to put a 2 out here, and I'm going to try to simplify this down. So the square root of 16 is 4, right? So I have 24 times 4, and then let's see, this c is to the 4th power, so 4 divided by 2 gives me c to the 2nd power. d is to the 8th power, so 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So when I look at this, let's see, 24 times 4 gives me 96, c squared d to the 4th, and that is my answer. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look at um, the bottom portion here. So for this part, we have, um, notice, two sets of parentheses. So hopefully your intuition is to see that this is, we need to FOIL. So to FOIL, we're going to do square root of 5 times 2 square root of 5. So when I multiply these two, what you have to do is multiply the outside with the outside. So the number in front of this square root is a 1. So 1 times 2 gives me... 2. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5, what you do is multiply the numbers. So square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 24, 5. Okay, now we're going to do the next one. So square root of 5 times 4. Well, that's just going to be 4 square root of 5. Basically, this 4 is not under a root, so you do not want to multiply it inside. You just keep it on the outside. That's why I have it here. Okay, now we're going to take the second term and multiply that through. So negative 2 times 2 square root of 5 is negative 4 square root of 5. Negative 2 times 4 gives me negative 8, I believe. And so when I look at this, I notice that these middle terms are the exact same but opposite in sign, so they cancel. And then this first term, I have a 2 square root of 5, a 25 is 5, so I have 2 times 5. 
And then I have a minus 8 at the end, so minus 8. So 2 times 5 is 10 minus 8. So 10 minus 8 is 2. That is my final answer. That is my final answer. All right, now we're going to take a look at D. So D, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to FOIL. So 2 square root of 3 times 2 square root of 2. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 gives me square root of 6. And then 2 square root of 3 times 6 gives me, let's see. Oh, sorry, I keep moving the screen a little bit. It's going to be 12 square root of 3. Okay, now I'm going to multiply these two. So I have a negative 8 times a 2, which is going to be negative 16. Square root of 5 times square root of 2 gives me square root of 10. Then I'm going to take this guy and multiply it with the 6. So negative 8 times 6 gives me negative 48 square root of 5. So when I look at this, I have to ask myself, okay, are there any like terms or the same radicals? And no, right? This is a 10, this is a 5, 3, and 6. And then the next thing I would try to do is see if I can simplify the root. 6 breaks down to 3 and 2. Unfortunately, I can't break it down any further. And I have no pairs. Like, you remember how when we were taking the square root of, like, 25 or, like, something? Like, this can break down to 5 and 5, and that's a pair. And so that's why you can bring out a 5. Well, 6, there's no pairs here. So this is already simplified. So I just have 4 square root of 6. And 3, I can't break it down any further than that. So I just have plus, square, tw plus 12 square root of 3. And 10, I can only break it down as what? 5 and 2. And I can't break it down any further. So in this case, I don't have a pair either. So I just have negative 16 square root of 10. And 5, the square root of 5, I can't break that down any further. So I just have negative 48 square root of 5. So when I look at this piece, it seems like this is all I can do. So that is actually, we're done here because there are no like terms.